Hi. In this video, we're going to look at the hypothesis test for goodness of fit. So in this test, we're going to have a given probability distribution, and we're going to measure it against a probability distribution from a sample to determine whether or not the given probability distribution actually fits or if it needs to be somehow modified. If we are going to conduct a hypothesis test for goodness of fit, we have the following requirements. The sample we use to conduct the test should be taken from a simple random sample, and the expected value for each category should be at least 5, and I'll talk about what that means uh, here in a minute. The test statistic we use here is not a Z or a T statistic, it's a chi-square statistic. So that's what this symbol says here, chi-square. And the chi-square statistic is the sum of observed minus expected value squared divided by expected values. The chi-square distribution looks different from the normal distribution in the student t distribution in that it's not a symmetric distribution, it's actually a right skewed distribution. And the test statistic, the chi-square statistic, tells us where we fall along this distribution. And as we do the test, we're going to compute that p-value, which is going to represent the area to the right of the chi-square statistic. So it works much the same way, but we are using a distribution that looks quite a bit different. So let's look at an example. In the year 2001, uh, we have demographic data for a particular town, and it was recorded as follows. 8% uh, of the population of the town identified as Asian Pacific Islander, 22% African American, 19% Hispanic Latino, 3% American Indian Alaska Native, 39% White, and 9% Other or Chose Not to Answer. So we took a random sample of 200 residents in this town in 2015. And we, and we have the following counts. Uh, 12 out of that random sample identified as Asian Pacific Islander, 42 is African American, 48 Hispanic Latino, 4 American Indian Alaska Native, 70 White, and 24 as other or chose not to answer. What we're trying to do in this test is determine whether or not the demographics have changed significantly. Okay, so the way we do that is we do a comparison of observed counts from our random sample and what the expected counts would be if our random sample followed exactly the same probability distribution as what we had before. Okay, so the counts from our sample data are the observed values. So we would have 12, 42, 48, 4, 70, and 24. To compute the expected counts, we take the probabilities from the distribution uh, multiplied by our sample size of 200. So the expected count for residents who identify as Asian Pacific Islander would be 8% of the sample size of 200, which is 16. The expected count for residents who identify as African American would be 22% of 200, which would be 44, and we can compute the rest of the expected counts in the same way. So here are the remaining uh, expected counts, and if you compare those to what we observed in our sample, those look somewhat similar, but there are some differences. So what we're trying to do in this test is determine which is more likely. Are these differences just due to random chance because we're using a random sample, or are these differences more significant uh, to the point where we might uh, adjust our probability distribution uh, and update it so it's more accurate? Okay. So uh, the only thing we really need to check here, uh, again, we have a requirement that the expected values are all at least five. Uh, our smallest expected value was 6, so we are okay to do the test. And our test statistic is the chi-square statistic. So on our calculator, we're going to first enter our data. So we're going to go to Stat and Edit, and we're going to clear out whatever is in here. And in List 1, we are going to enter our observed. And then we're going to go over to List 2 and enter uh, the expected. Once you have your observed and expected values entered, 
we are going to press stat again. We are going to go over to tests. And we are going to do the chi-square goodness of fit test. So that's option capital D on your list of statistical tests. It should say chi-square GOF test. So we are going to press enter. Uh, make sure you have the correct l lists uh, listed here. I put the observed data in L1 and I put the expected data in L2. Uh, if you did that backwards, just switch these around. The degrees of freedom here is the number of categories minus one. So our distribution had six categories. So that is five degrees of freedom. So I don't need to change that here because I already have a five. But if you have something else there, uh, you want to change it to the number of categories minus one. And then I'm going to calculate and it gives me a chi-square value of about 28.3 and a p-value of 3.23 times 10 to the minus fifth power which is this number okay so that's a very small p-value it's definitely less than alpha alpha was 0 0.05 our p-value is less than that which means we reject the null which reminds me I forgot to write down the hypotheses here. So let's talk about that for a second. When we do a goodness of fit test, I'm going to move down a little bit, your null hypothesis is going to be that the given distribution fits, or that the given distribution is accurate. Okay, So the given distribution fits the data. Your alternate hypothesis is going to be that the given distribution does not fit the data. So when you do a goodness of fit test, uh, these are the hypotheses we use. Okay, so back to my result. My result was rejecting the null, which means we have evidence to suggest that the distribution no longer fits. Uh, so we should probably update our uh, expected percentages that pertain to each of these categories. So our conclusion would be there is sufficient evidence to suggest that the demographics of the town have changed. Okay, So according to our test something has changed and we should update uh, the demographics of the population of this town. The given distribution from 2001 no longer fits. Okay, So that's what a goodness of fit test looks like. Uh, we are comparing a given probability distribution to an actual uh, sample to see how different the uh, counts are. Okay, um, This is a little bit different, but this is another use of a goodness of fit test. Maybe not specifically a traditional goodness of fit test, but we can use the idea of the goodness of fit test to examine a situation like this. Uh, a particular school district had a history of poor scores on a standardized test, and we have a distribution of scores uh, that were obtained over the past 10 years for this school district. Okay, so these are the percentages of student scores that fall into each one of these categories. So because this is pretty bad, uh, the state sanctioned the school for its poor test scores, uh, basically told the school they had to do better or there would be consequences. And we look at a random sample of 245 students from the school who took the test the following year, and these are the counts uh, of scores that fall into each one of these categories. And because of these counts, the school is now being investigated for cheating. So what do we think about that? Okay. Um, well, again, what we want to do, we have the observed data right here. This is your observed data. And we want to compare that to the expected values. So we can compute the expected values up here by multiplying each of these percentages by our sample size, which was 245. So the expected number of students who get a score under 500 should be 16% of 245, which is about 39.2. The expected number of students who score between 501 and 700 should be 39% of 245, which is 95.55, and I can compute the rest of these expected values in the same way. So those are my expected counts for each of these categories. Now let's do a goodness of fit test. So again I'm going to go to stat, I'm going to edit the lists, and I still have my data from the last example so I'm going to clear that out. 
I'm going to put the observed counts in the list one. So these are the counts I got from my random sample of 245 students. And then in L2, I'm going to put the expected counts. Then once you have your data entered, we're going to go back to stat tests and go down to goodness of fit test again. Uh, again, we want observed in L1, expected in L2. The degrees of freedom here would be four because we have five categories. So it's the number of categories in your distribution minus one, which is four and we would calculate and that gives us a chi-square statistic of 229.1 and a p-value of 2.11 times 10 to the negative 48 power which is approximately nothing okay so the p-value here is extremely small. What that means is these counts are extremely unlikely to occur if the null hypothesis is true. And again, our null hypothesis here is that the distribution fits the data. Okay? So our goodness of fit test tells us that the data we got from our random sample is extremely unlikely to occur at this school. Okay. So, you know, the school districts was sanctioned so we would assume that they undertook some sort of initiative to improve test scores but it's highly unlikely that one year later uh, the results would be this significantly different okay now so this doesn't prove that there were cheating involved but what this does do is uh, certainly warrant an investigation so with this small of a p-value and the likelihood of these test scores just sort of occurring randomly or organically based on whatever initiative the school put in place. Uh, again, that's extremely unlikely to occur. So an investigation uh, would be warranted and we would start probably interviewing uh, people to see if in fact any sort of cheating uh, occurred. But you can use a good enough fit test to see um, how likely strange results are and if there might be uh, foul play. Okay, so uh, there's a couple examples uh, performing a goodness of fit test.